the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance chairman and CEO. Thank you for your time on Bloomberg Television. Obviously, a priority right now for you up until 2022 is the Alliance 2022, as you're going to boost uh, unit sales to 14 million. You're going to double synergies. You're going to get more EVs. But at the same time, you have this other challenge that has been floated out there, and that is simplifying or possibly altering the very complicated cross-shareholding of the Alliance. Yeah. Why undertake that while you're trying to do this other ambitious Alliance? Uh, uh, well... You're right to say that the first task is the business, about the development of Alliance 2022, which is going to allow the three companies to grow, to be profitable. That's the main task. Parallelly to this, the main preoccupation is about the sustainability of the Alliance, the irreversibility of the Alliance, the fact that this cross-shareholding will continue for a long time. And there are uh, some preoccupation that the present organization and the present stri uh, structure would not allow this to continue. Do you so believe that? Do you no, believe no, frankly, I don't think so. But I still have to listen to all the stakeholders who have this kind of worry, sit down and try to look with the board of Nissan, with the board of Renault, with the different stakeholders who are involved, particularly our shareholders, about what can we done in order to make sure that this sense of the fact that I think this alliance is irreversible is shared by all the stakeholders. So this is a uh, ongoing work that needs to be deepened, and we have some time to bring, a, hopefully, a good solution to that. What is the time frame, and what are the first steps well, that I, have I already been taken? It would be fair to say that this is uh, within the term, which is coming. That means we said between now and 2022, we need to come, uh, uh, hopefully, with the solution that will satisfy all the parties. That mean, obviously, all the parties have to agree on this in order to make any move. And um, I'm pretty optimistic on the fact that when we go to the roots of why people are preoccupied about the sustainability and the reversibility, we find a good solution. Now, over the years, you and I have talked a number of times at a number of different auto shows, even in Thailand once, and repeatedly I've heard you say that the alliance is the best way forward for shareholders and stakeholders. Yeah. But obviously, as you approach retirement age, we're not saying you're retiring, but you're retiring age at 64, what has made you change your mind about well, I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not changing my mind because uh, that, that's exactly the point a lot of people are asking. Say, okay, as long as you are here, you know, there is no worry, but what happens after you're gone? That's one of the main concerns about <laughs> how you maintain the sustainability of this. So I would say we have to solve something which supposedly may happen after uh, my term is finished. So again, I, I think we are on the right track. I think this alliance is working very well. The main concern here is how to ensure all the stakeholders that will continue to go well in the long term. How do you keep them happy? And if you already started negotiations or even talks with, yeah. like, the French government, because you're going to yeah. need French government approval, you'll need Japanese government exactly. approval, you'll need Nissan board approval, you'll need Renault board approval, okay. and we haven't even talked about Mitsubishi. Yeah, no, no, I'm including Mitsubishi yeah. also. <laughs> because obviously, as we said from the beginning, this partner started on a win-win base. That means yeah. everybody needs to agree. That's the basic thing. That's why we have been going for 19 years without any problem and with a good performance for all the companies. So the basic thing is we just want to make sure no matter what is the solution that we may find, everybody agrees on it. Are you getting an indication that perhaps the French government would be willing to sell down its 15% stake or exit altogether or whether Renault, well, you're the chairman of Renault, yeah. whether Renault would sell down its 43% stake so they can give voting rights back to Nissan yeah. or even give Nissan share up to no, 25%. You know, you know, it's very complicated. You know, all, of these, all of these are consequences. Yes. First, you need to say, to define what you want and what is the solution on which everybody agrees. Right. Then in function of the solution, then you will have consequences in terms of cross-shareholding, organization, processes, succession, leadership, boards, etc. So I think it would be too early to say who's going to sell what and who's going to be buying what. We may not even move on, 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 on this front. But I would say this is not an objective by itself. This is a consequence right. of a solution that we would find together. Now, of course, you built a career, whether it was at, of course, uh, uh, the tire company in North America and then into Renault and Nissan of cutting costs and mm. restructuring, right? Mm. So we, we know that at Renault, the average employee at Renault contributes half per head of the Nissan employee. That's not really sustainable, is it? Oh, I mean, Renault is uh, today a very profitable company, has been, uh, you know, one of the highest uh, rate of growth of all the car makers for the last three years. 
Uh, so it's a healthy company. It's going to continue to grow. One of the reasons for which maybe the average income per car is lower at Renault compared to some of uh, the two peers in the alliance is the fact that Renault is not present in the North American continent. And you know very well that it's in North America that the average income per car is the highest in the world. So if you're not present in North America and you are very present in markets where the average price of the car is lower, automatically it translates in your PL. So I, I don't think this is due to the ability or non ability of the company to perform. I think this is just due to the geographical footprint, which, as you know, one day or the other will be sold. It's a very complex situation, but is there a bottom line that you could share with us, both for Renault and for Nissan? You know, the, the, the bottom line I'm telling you is that the line is going well. And I think everybody agrees on this. All the parties, Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, and the two main governments involved, which is Japan and, uh, and France. Everybody knows this is going well. Nobody wants to mess up with the alliance. Everybody wants this alliance to continue. The only question is, how do you make sure that all the stakeholders feel good about the long-term sustainability of the alliance, which is a fair concern? And the only thing I'm saying is there would be no solution unless it would be accepted by all the parties. So we all need to, at a certain point in time, discuss this. We have plenty of time in front of us and bring a good solution. Is Mitsubishi on the table? Would a merger... Oh, Mitsub Mi Mitsub Mitsubishi obviously is part of the alliance and obviously would be interested in anything that would modify uh, any organizational structure of the Would that be a lower hanging fruit, though, that that would be merged before a Renault and I don't Nissan? think so. I think, you know what, I don't think anything is going to move unless okay. we find a solution. We're not going to go step by step, uh, modifying here and there. This is not going to happen. The cross share holding that you mentioned will have not been touched for the last 19 years. I always said that we will not touch it unless there is a main strategic goal. Unless the strategic goal is here, I don't think you're going to modify anything. In five years from now or four years, at 2022, will Nissan and Renault be merged? Will it be, um, look different? Will it look uh, different? Nobody can answer this okay. question. Okay, the next question. <laughs> How about China? We know by yeah. the next five years, they're yeah. going to start eliminating the joint venture yes. requirements. Yeah. Uh, you've long said that you like your partnership with Dongfeng. Yeah. Do you see opportunities, though, to go in by yourself? Oh, I mean, uh, the opportunity of going by ourselves will exist when the laws will be modified and, uh, and the regulation will, will be modified. We are happy with our partners today. Now, uh, there are a lot of technological development. There are a lot of new products, mobility services coming on our way. The question is, are you going to continue to develop this with a partner or are you going to do it alone? This is a question that every car manufacturer is going to have to answer by himself. In our case, we have Dongfang as a partner, we have Brilliance as a partner, we have uh, Guangzhou Automotive Company as a partner. We have many partners because we have three companies, and each one of the company enjoy different partnership. We're doing well, we hope we'll continue to do well, and we'll continue to work with partner as long as it fits our needs and our uh, interests, as well as theirs. Will you move more production on the mainland because I know Infinity, their goal is to get up to 90% domestic production, no, without but any they're doubt. cutting the tariffs, the import tariffs. Yeah, but without any doubt, without any doubt, uh, I, I think to be competitive in China, more than 95% of your supply needs to be Chinese. And I don't think there is an exception. Uh, so uh, for the people who are below this percentage, it's just temporary. I think we all know that in order to compete in the largest market in the world, you have to be located here. Is this a big bang reform when Xi Jinping announced the reduction, eventual reduction of the tariffs for imports and as well as finally eliminating the joint venture 50-50? Because people I talk to say they've already gleaned as much technological advantage from the foreign partners it's as they can. It's a big signal. It's a big signal. It's an important signal for us because it's telling us uh, long term in advance when you're planning for the future, you have to take this in consideration that you're not going to have this uh, obligation on you. Now, if you want to continue with your partner, it's fine, but you're not going to oblige by law uh, to do that. It's a very important element. Obviously, I don't think it's going to change anything on the short term, but it will help us when we are planning 10 years down the road, uh, because, you know, in China, you cannot just manage the business on a yearly basis. You're going to have to look at 10 years down the road where you're going to be, where you're going to be bringing. You have this option, and this is very important for us. How about Russia? Otto Vaz, uh, new CEO, are you still confident in the Russian market? Oh, yeah. And if there is a merger eventually down the road, does that put Renault Nissan in a sensitive situation with your participation in Russia and Iran? Absolutely not. I, I think, the, first on Russia, I'm optimistic on the Russian market. The Russian market is one with the highest rate of recovery so far uh, this year. Uh, we invested a lot in Russia. We suffered when the Russian market was down. Uh, now with the recovery, we feel much better about Russia. And hopefully you're going to see that all these investments that the Alliance has done, particularly Renault, 
are going to give a lot of, of dividends. Uh, we today are the largest automotive group in Russia with more than one third of the market between uh, Renault, uh, Nissan and the, Lada, and the Lada brand. And this is going to continue. And we have a, a, a target to be at 40 percent. Now, uh, on the Iranian side, let's wait to see what the American decision is going to be right. in May. We don't have too much uh, time. Uh, and then after this, we will decide how the future uh, unfolds. If the U.S. decides to remain in the agreement, well, it's business as usual. That means the development will continue. Yep. Well, if, if they uh, uh, withhold from continuing into this agreement, we just need to make sure about what the rest of the international community is going to be doing. So uh, the, decision, the U.S. decision will be important, will be watched carefully by all people who have interest yep. in, in, in Iran. And then we will tell you, if there is any change in our v policy. Very quickly, a couple of words to Donald Trump on a potential trade war or currency war would be? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think there is a trade war. Okay. I think it's a negotiation which is taking place. We'll see. Carlos Ghosn, always great to see you. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time.